Welcome to episode 93 from the Shed End. Theo, how are you doing? Not bad. Not a bit congested and sniffy with a mix of a cold and hay fever. So if I sound a bit nasal on this pod, apologies in advance for that. But other than that, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, definitely. I think every Friday we come on and we, we give our hay fever update. But yeah, definitely still suffering from the pollen. Uh, but apart from that, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Like you said, an, a nice win to talk about last weekend. Very good performance, which we'll talk about. Uh, shortly but if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you're on spotify or apple Podcasts. make sure you hit the link in the link tree uh, the link tree link in the description below um that'll take you to all our social accounts as well and uh, our youtube channel as well so make sure again you go and subscribe on there as well forest nottingham forest um i'm not gonna say it. i nearly did i just stop myself from saying what i usually say um Interesting game. Let's call it an interesting game. Off the back of the Bournemouth performance, you would expect some sort of continual progression from that performance last Saturday. But just give me your overall thoughts before we get into predictions about your overall thoughts, expectations um, going into tomorrow's game. Yeah, definitely more confident than I was for the previous games throughout April. Um, Like you said, maybe that win against Bournemouth might give us that bit of momentum that we need at the moment to maybe finish the season strongly. Um, we know that that kind of very scrappy win we got um, against Leeds start of March helped us get maybe the win against Dortmund and then that win against um, against uh, against Leicester away from home. So I'm kind of hoping for the same type of um, results um, coming in the next few weeks. I'm still expecting a tough game. I think Forest have a lot to play for. Their future is still not 100% guaranteed in the league. Um they, they've got a good team. We have to remember that. They've got a lot of players from, you know, they've got Kayla Navas, a three-time Champions League winner in goal. They've got, I think, that lad from Atletico Madrid, Lodi. Um, yeah. And there's that other guy. Look, he looked very good in the reverse fixture back in January. I forgot his name. But um, but yeah, they've got a good a good team. Um, very unpredictable. I think their last result was a 4-3 win against Southampton. So they, they obviously, they can concede goals, but they look good going um, forward as well. We need to be very solid defensively. It's a tough game where I do think we can't maybe, we shouldn't change the team too much from that team that played fairly well against Bournemouth. I definitely feel like the last thing you want to be doing is, you know, dropping Badger Shield after his performance against Bournemouth and not having him play again until maybe last game of the season, which is what happened recently. He hasn't featured since that game against Brighton. So, um, so yeah, I think lineup is key. I think Madweke is another one that needs to start. He looked really promising against both Arsenal and Bournemouth. Um, but yeah, I'm still definitely a lot more confident, but still, as a Chelsea fan this season, you can't be overly confident can you I mean a team that's conceded 65 goals not in Gunn Forest I'm expecting some goals I'm expecting <laughs> some goals tomorrow I don't, I don't care how we score them if they're own goals or you know worldies I don't I don't care I, I want some goals tomorrow because 65 goals conceded means that we should be scoring regardless of who we line you know who we put out to, to line up uh tomorrow but no I agree with you 100 percent you know I think um sometimes less change is better you know, and I think one of the players that we didn't mention earlier on was Noni Medweki, who, you know, back to back games now has looked very much like a, a player that's not scared to take players on, wants to get that ball in the box, you know, committed to, to, to getting the ball forward as much as possible. So he has to stay in the team for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is a game, again, a nothing game, really more pride in terms of the fact that with Chelsea, we should be beating Nottingham Forest. Um, they do have some really good players. You know, look at Morgan Gibbs-White, um, Brennan Johnson as well, thinking in, in, on the right side for them. Um, they've got, I mean, they've got some really good players like the, the you know, Lodi that you mentioned as well. So it's going to be a difficult game. And I think they are, yeah, they are still fighting for their, their Premier League survival for next season. You know, they're only three points from the drop. These are the sort of games that they're going to be up for. Um, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, that they are going to be, it's going to be these kind of games, even you know, last week with Bournemouth, but these sort of games where they're scrapping for those points down there, um, almost like we are, but, you know, in, in, for, for different reasons. But, you know, they're going to want to get three points and they're not going to be scared to to approach that game, I think, from kickoff with the intention to try and score as many goals, knowing how bad we've been defensively this season as well. I think um, Cooper will set them up to to really go from the start of the game. So we have to be switched on at the back. Badia Shaw has to be in that team as well. Um, but nonetheless, I, st- I still think three points. And I'm, I'm saying that sort of half-heartedly, but I think 
based on what I'm reading here, you know, 65 goals. They've only sc- they scored the same amount of goals as us, but conceded 65 goals. You, you just said it right before, you know, they can score goals, but, you know, they are quite leaky at the back as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, but at home, I expect us to beat them 100%. Um, lineup, let's, let's start with your, your predicted lineup. I think we might what, be what in agreement. <clears throat> I'll go with um, Kepa. I think we didn't mention it, but he made some solid saves against Bournemouth. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think he needs to retain his spot. And then we mentioned maybe Mendy last week, but I think Kepa needs to start. I still don't know if I want a back three or a back four today. It's a tricky one. Because I think we still have those options at right back at the moment. It's either Chilobo or Aspi. But I think it worked fairly well against Bournemouth. So I'm going to go with a back four. I'm going to go with Chilobo, Bajishil, Silva, Lewis Hall. Then I'm going to go with... Um, Enzo and Kante as my central mids with Gallagher just ahead of them. And then it's got to be Madweke, Jao Felix. And this is where it gets tricky because pff, Havertz was useless against Bournemouth. He's trying to take a header with his back, you know, back facing the goal. <laughs> uh, and then Aubameyang, I don't think will feature again until the end of the season. And then I'm going to say, but I'm going to start Fafana. I'm going to start Sacho yeah. Fafana. I think this is a type of game we haven't seen him feature um, since that game against Southampton where he had to be taken off at half-time. But, but yeah, I think this is a good game for him. Get a couple of minutes or a couple of cameos um, or even a couple of starts before the end of the season and get his confidence up, whether he stays at Chelsea this summer or goes out on loan. But I think a good 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 game for him to start. So I'm going to go with Datro, David Datro for Fana. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much what I'd go with. Um, I did question maybe do I put Raheem ahead of Jao Felix? Um, but I, I don't know what's happened to Sterling. I think it's a confidence thing or I don't know. Something seems to have sort of dropped off for him. Um, but another, I, I another one who had an impact off the bench actually for his assist did. for Felix. Yeah. He did. He did. Um, I, I just think, as I said, I think this this game is going to be where Nottingham Forest are going to be from the start are going to be pressing front foot football. You know, they're going to want to be trying to run in behind or, you know, isolate certain players um, and definitely try and command the midfield. So I think for that kind of game, I think you do need someone like Xiao Felix who at the other end is going to try and do exactly the same as what they're trying to do. And I don't know if Sterling would do that. Um, I agree with Fofana, uh, David Datra Fofana in, in, in that number nine role. I, I just think Aubameyang now, like I said, I think it's that kind of weird period for him where he's clearly going to go. Club don't really want to be paying fees out for someone that's going to be leaving the club um, at appearance fees. So, you know, it, it kind of makes sense. And and why not? Why not give Fafana an opportunity? Someone that clearly may be here next season. Um, I know we haven't mentioned it, but Armando Broyar apparently is ahead of his schedule um, in terms of his rehabilitation. So you'd expect him to feature definitely for pre-season. But I think we need to give Fafana an opportunity to, to at least see whether he needs to go on loan next season. We can't just send him out on loan because we might actually have a, a role for him to play in, the, in, the, in our club next season. So I think play him, see what he can do. You know, you do have the likes of Kai Havertz that can come off the bench. Raheem Sterling can play in that sort of false nine or whatever you want to call it. He can play across the, the whole of the front three. So there's options off the bench as well. But I would go with uh, Jao Felix. I'd go with Nani Madweki and um, David Datcher for Farnes with the front three. And I agree with you, Conor Gallagher, not not in a sort of flat front three, uh, flat free midfield, more so just an advanced role um, in front of um, Enzo and Kante. I think that would work so much better as opposed to... Um, which I think he did kind of do that in against mm. Bournemouth. I don't think it was a you know just a free midfield. He was more advanced than the other two, so, and it worked. You know, it worked. And I know I call him a bull in a china shop, but this could be the, this could be the game where we we need him to 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 do that. We really do. We need him to be bullish and and obviously not get sent off, but to to get to get some tackles in and, and win that ball back for us. Yeah, I think we're kind of in agreement with the lineup then. Yeah, yeah. Shame on Men- Mendy. I think Mendy. <laughs> I mean, again, I think he could leave in the summer. You, you spoke about yeah. some of the assets that we've got, but I think he's another one. Um, got a new, got a new agent today as well, um, which could maybe okay. mean that he he might look elsewhere. I think he's the type of keeper that will want first team football. He's he's not injured anymore. There's no reason why he shouldn't be starting in his eyes. So, I think his new yeah. agent that he he might he's just acquired may try to look for a move away. But you do wonder which club would maybe look at him. I think every club, top club at least, has got their first choice number one. So um, it'll be an interesting so- one. A swap for um, Onana at Inter. It's a possibility. Could we, could we, could we, could we, 
get some Lukaku situation involved there as well. But no, it's right. I think he's, I think Kepa has proven himself as a, a, a good goalkeeper. I still think we need to bring someone in. I, I do think we need a, a very solid goalkeeper. And I think out of the two, um, you know, Kepa seems to be the one that can pull off those. And, and Mendy was, you know, Mendy, if you think back to Mendy when he first signed, he was, I mean, we were calling him world class. He would have I mean, won the Champions com- League without his contributions. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, he's he's someone that has still got quality in him. I just think he needs to maybe move on now, or you know, understand his his role has changed um, as first choice at Chelsea. Whoever we bring in, but um, let's get back to the game for tomorrow. As we said, it's it's a, it's a game that we expect we should be winning. But give me your score predict uh, prediction before we wrap up. What what's the the score potentially going to be tomorrow? Yeah. I think there's going to be goals, like you said. I don't think it's going to be that kind of nil-nil, one-nil. Um, I think it's going to be a, a replica of the the scoreline of last week. I think Chelsea will win 3-1. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go 3-0. I'm going to go 3-0. I think I'm hoping we get our defence right tomorrow. I think it's going to be questionable. I, I still think Aspilicueta will play on that right. So if we play back four, I can see Aspilicueta coming in as a right back. Um, that might then give you the option of going three centre-backs with obviously Chalaba moving over to support Badia Shield and Thiago Silva with Lewis Hall. Um, but I would, wouldn't change that. I would st- I'm going against my own sort of policy, but I'd go over back four. And I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd keep Trevor Chalaba there as right back and I'd put Lewis Hall as left back. Um, gives us more options in midfield as well. So I'd be, I'd be very reluctant to change that, but I'm going to go three now. I'm going to go three now. Chelsea are scoring three goals, which is something that we haven't seen too often this season. So we're both in agreement there. 65 goals conceded by Nando yeah. Forrest. I want some goals tomorrow. It'd be embarrassing if we don't score a couple, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, we need to score a goal at least. Um, make it 66 conceded for the season for Nando Forrest. But it's going to be a good game. Stanford Bridge, I'm sure, will be rocking um, as it hasn't been for the last couple of weeks. But I'm sure, um, you know, with that win from Bournemouth, we'll hopefully give that and the Thiago Silva banner we haven't mentioned that as well um the new banner that will be presented tomorrow um ahead of kickoff um I I, I don't know if you're are you going to the yeah. game are you, are you, yeah. yeah yeah so it should be uh <laughs> should be should be interesting it could it could end in tears you could be walking out of Stamford Bridge three three nil down at half time yeah uh, I'm going with my mate who likes a who, he likes a drink or two so hopefully um that will number Number pain need- if if we lose, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna need it. Um, but no, should be should be a good uh, should be a good game. But let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let us know what you think the 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 predicted lineup will be from Frank Lampard and also the result tomorrow. Are we actually gonna win another game back to back wins? Can't believe I'm saying it. Are we gonna get another victory under Frank Lampard? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and also make sure you hit the notification bell as well. Theo, as always, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Uh, We'll be back next week with another episode of From the Shed End. Thank you very much for watching.